How's it going guys? Welcome to this video where I am going to cook a basically like a pasta carbonara type thing um, on my Trangia Mini which I've just bought um, as part of my bike packing setup. Um, obviously I'm, I'm improvising a little bit, I should be bike packing by now. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that a bit more in the video while I'm cooking but um, yeah, this is just a good opportunity while it's can't go out and do any actual mountain biking to actually practice a few of the recipes that I've got in mind for what I want to cook when I'm out. Generally I'm going to do two or three day trips so um, you know two or three days at a time only you can pack and carry quite a lot of nice food so you know that's a big part of what I want to do in my bike packing sort of 50 mile days cook a nice meal eat nice campsite well you know wild camping so so yeah that's what this is I'm going to start practicing First practice is a spaghetti carbonara, but with pasta, you know, pasta shapes instead of the spaghetti. So yeah, let's crack on. So just before we start, a little rundown of the ingredients. This is pasta. Say what? The smallest kind of, it's not quite as small as the last time I did this. Um, macaroni cheese pasta is what I was after, because basically when I cook, um, when I'm out on the trail, I want to enjoy the cooking, enjoy the food, but I also want to, to save fuel and not and not have it take too long. My days are gonna be sort of 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever mile days on a mountain bike, setting up camp, and then, you know, I, I wanna set up camp, camp early enough that I cook some nice food. So using something like that, like I say, I think last when I tested this once, I used thinner pasta, so hopefully this will work. But basically I'll boil this up with the pasta already in the cold water from the start and then take it off the heat as soon as it boils and just let it cook um, off the heat to save, um, you know, to save fuel. you just got to be a bit careful because you can end up, the pasta can just end up breaking down. So there's the pasta, there's some mushrooms, um, a little bit of butter in there. This is just like a dark cheddar cheese. Um, yeah, that'll thicken up the sauce and make it nice and cheesy. Um, and then in here, these are like these are like smoked bacon bits. You can use normal bacon, you could probably use ham. I think they call it pancetta, is it? I can't remember, but yeah, they're the bacon bits. And then in there is an egg. Um, and then this here is actually single cream. It's not the healthiest way of doing it, but it makes just a amazingly kind of hearty, creamy sauce, which you can kind of get away with while you're out on the trail. Um, calorie wise so yeah I just wanted to run through that now we'll start preparing some of the food normally all I've got to do is chop up a little bit of cheese and chop up those mushrooms and that's it obviously normally I would have the pasta go in in the meantime while I was doing that but because I'm filming on a little tree stump I'll just I'll just prep before I start cooking so I could fit all of, it looks like a lot this um, this meal a lot a lot of carrying if you like a lot of trail weight but um, obviously I, I don't need to carry that size of block of cheese. That could be like a little inch cubed thing for this, for this meal particularly. Um, so I could, I could probably cram all of the ingredients bar the egg, which I would have in like a, one of those little plastic four egg boxes. I could get everything probably in one Sealy bag. So, you know, the pasta in one Sealy bag and then inside it in another Sealy bag, you know, most of the other ingredients. So it's not, yeah, it's not too much to carry. Oh, there goes me mushroom stalk. So you just, I'm just gonna cut this up quite small because it wants to be roughly the same size as the kind of, as the bacon bit. Cool little knife, it's a little knife made by a company called Joker, a Spanish company. I wanted something nice and small. It's small, especially in my hand because I've got big shovel hands, but nice and, Nice and small and lightweight. I don't, I'm not planning on doing much bushcrafting. You can't make fires here anywhere really because it's it's illegal because obviously everything's so dry. You can catch fire to stuff, so especially in the Sierra Nevada. But I think everywhere actually in Spain, especially during the summer, fires are completely, you know, campfires are completely illegal. So I've got no bushcrafting needs from the knife. It's kind of perfect for, for what I'm going to be doing. Came with a nice edge on it actually. Spanish company, I don't know if I said that. I wanted to buy something, something Spanish because I live in Spain. I want to buy stuff from the little companies that I can find in Spain. And actually I've got a beer to show you in a minute because a mate of mine locally has just started brewing his own beer. Um, for the cheese, all you're doing is you're making it into kind of little cubes just so as it'll melt up nice once I've done like the creamy sauce. 
and that's fine. Okay, so that's it for prep, done. So the next thing is to fire up this little bad boy, the Transia Mini. What can I give you for a bit of perspective? These bad boys are small, really small. Set of sunglasses there. It's hard to tell with hands, people's hands, because I've got big hands, other people have got small hands. So it's about the width of a set of sunglasses, um, men's sunglasses, so it is small. I've got some little gripes with it. Not that I've used it, but I think that they could have made it much more compatible with the rest of the stuff in the range. I think I think this pot should be the same size as the as the is it the 28, the middle sized one, the smaller out of the two regular ones. I think that they could have made this that size, this slightly larger to fit on that, and then a kettle would still go in it, and then come up with something different for the burner. The burner could go inside the kettle, and instead of this aluminium thing, perhaps like a flat, um, you know, plate plate stove frame thing. And then it, then there's sort of crossovers then between the systems. Can't get meths here, so this is um, this is just like the local hardware store, cheap, cheap alcohol stuff in like a little plastic Vargo bottle. I quite like those. It does the job though. It burns real clean. You can't see it burning at all. And I'm not 100% convinced it burns as hot as uh, meths, even when it's kind of fully warmed up, but. It does the job from my experiments so far. Yeah. I'm going to do the pasta and the water all at the same time, so if I just take that off the heat quickly. And then the all important nice glug of oil on it. Stop it all sticking together. That trange is warmed up fantastically already. So that fuel is good. I was a little bit concerned about that fuel. I've used it with my other trange just for boiling water, but. My little wooden spoon as well, I've done like a handle wrap on it because this is so shallow, sauce is never going to get on the wrap. So I just did like a little handle wrap, cut down on a kitchen spoon. Now people have been giving this little thing a very hard time and I think it's very unjustified myself. Yes, it feels flimsy compared to the normal one, but the point in making a kit that this small is to make it lightweight, and not that the existing tongs are lightweight, but that's like a, it's an ingenious little thing. It seems people were quick to complain about it being a bit flimsy, but it's uh, it's ingenious. I mean, I got a kind of an engineering background, so I know you know how much thought goes into something even this small, and that's yeah, it's a it's a genius little thing. So while I'm waiting for that to boil, like I said just now, this is a beer made by my friend locally. Um, and I got a free bottle of it, as well as buying like a 12 pack, I got a free bottle of it. Um, Launchpad Pale Ale by Coheat Brewing. Now, I didn't bring a glass because it's a little bit, um, a little bit impractical, but this is the kind of color of it. Oh, it smells wonderful, wow. Right, so this is the first taste of that ale I just mentioned. Wow, that's wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy that that's nice. Can't really get ale. Well, you can get ales, you can get, you normally get like imported stuff, you know, like um, German pale ales and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure this is probably, but this this tastes like a nice English ale to me that I've had. In, I'm not like an ale connoisseur, don't get me wrong, but this tastes like a like a really nice ale. Oh my god, I've got 12 bottles of this in the fridge. I'm chuffed. Ah. That's a nice beer. Hmm. There we go. What a treat while I'm out here cooking. Okay, so we've got a nice little rolling boil going there. So I'm just gonna give it like a minute just to try and give it the best chance possible to cook off the heat. A little mix up. 
like that. And then that'll, that'll kind of help it just steam the rest of the weight. Can't keep me Vargo thing in place. If anything, it's a little bit too light. So now we're on to the kind of, you know, the sauce and everything. So you just need a splattering of oil. You don't, it, this is the, obviously the non-stick pan, so it's great. And obviously the bacon bit's gonna give off loads of fat. So what I like to do is just get all your bacon bits on there. Going nice. Beautiful. And there obviously, I mean this is already cooked I think. The bacon over here is confusing. I think most of the time it's already cooked. But that's fine, it's still gonna give off plenty of fat. Um, and I like to let it let this cook cook down a little bit to give off the fat, and then you chop the mushroom mushrooms in to soak up the fat again so there's not too much fat floating around loose when you add the cream to make the sauce. Um, because this is obviously bacon and it's very salty, you don't need to, to season this dish with too much salt. You just it, it needs pepper. I like quite a lot of pepper in these kinds of saucy dishes. Um, it's a it's a preference thing. You can put how much you like in, but I like it quite peppered. Cool little thing from MSR. Salt in one end and pepper in the other end. So I'm going to give this a good dousing in pepper. And it'll kind of darken and make the sauce nice and nice and peppery. It's all very like delicate. That's the only thing with this cooking set is it's all so small and delicate that you're just on the verge of scatting it over all the time. I mean, I am working on a tree trunk today, so that makes it a little bit more precarious. But I think that's the best thing to do, isn't it? Just kind of lift it up, take control of the whole pan while you're doing the mixing. Stop trying to keep it all together, keep it all in place on the heat. So I'm going to get the mushroom on now so as that can cook with it and they both sort of, sort of come together at the same time whilst keeping that cheese out. Now obviously get these right in there and now and the, and the mushrooms will then start soaking up the fat off the uh, off that bacon. And in the meantime, I just need to check my pasta isn't going kind of too smolchy, sort of mashed pasta. Because then I can just take the water off it and it will stop soaking up water. Like, you know, the heat will stay in there, but there's no water there for it to take on. Oh well, yeah, pasta's perfect. A bit too close for you to see, but that's real nice. So that works, works real well. That's a good experiment. I know it's obvious, but and it certainly works very well with rice all the time anyway. But like pasta, you know, spaghetti can take a little bit like, you know, spaghetti takes like eight minutes or something. Shop bought spaghetti takes sort of eight minutes to cook through boiling, like, you know, so. So that's a good little experiment to see fuel for sure. I really like it. I like this is the first time cooking with the mini and it's good. Even though it's a little bit small, practically in terms of cooking it also creates nice sized portions if you can get the grips of using it i think goes without saying i like it i like all these uh what do they call it asmr videos where it's all about the sound and your senses was it audio sensory something it goes without saying that this smells fantastic because it's, you know, it's bacon and mushroom frying 
school actually I've got a little butter I might just put a little butter a little bit of butter in there just to add to the flavor of it all don't need much because the dish obviously isn't very big you know it's not a very not very much food really okay so I'm gonna add the cream now get the sauce going so the amount of sauce or cream is really dependent on your taste it's sort of Depends on how much pasta you've cooked, depends on how much you want it coated. 100% up to you. So you can see it started to simmer there pretty quickly now. So, um, yeah, you kind of, I guess you do want it to reduce a little bit, not much, when you add the cheese. Once it's hot enough, it thickens it up anyway, so... So there isn't like a massive amount of reducing that you need to do. What am I doing like for fuel actually? This is probably getting close to the... Yeah, almost empty. Nice to try and get it done in one one fill. It's probably hot enough to start melting the cheese now there, so let's get that in. If you know Trangiers, you know the deal, it's supposed to last about half an hour, 35 minutes on one three quarter I think it is, or two thirds, three quarters is it? Full, you know, fuel blast. Um, but there's got to be a certain amount of discrepancy in that depending on what fuel you're using, I guess. You can see that cheese is probably, yeah, no, there's still some chunks in there, but it's getting there. Almost melted down, thickening the sauce nicely. Probably, probably just about right for me for pepper, actually, so I won't go any more on the pepper. Getting there. The question is, will we do it? And one lot of fuel. All I need to do is get this cooked and then basically you stick the dry pasta back on the heat just for a, a few moments to re just to heat, get some heat through the pasta, put the sauce in, get some heat through it all and then there's that one final ingredient which is the egg and um, which you put on after you cook you can, otherwise it will turn into kind of scrambled egg you, you, you crack the egg in there and mix it in while it's still hot and then you can cover it up to steam a little bit after you've completely stirred it in, but you don't you don't want any heat on it after that. Otherwise the egg will start to kind of scramble. Let's try and push on and try and get it done in one lot of fuel. Because that's like a nice set point then, I think. There's my pasta, still nice and hot actually. Um, let's adjust your angle a little bit. Right, I'm set up all ass about face for this because I'm actually left handed so I want the spoon in my left hand but I'll do it, try and do it the other way around as much as I can or at least make it so as you guys can see what I'm doing just going to make a little bit of a hole in the middle there and then boom in with that oh that non-stick pan's good eh Yowza. Fantastic. Really got this pot up to its absolute maximum, haven't I? Let's get that nice and mixed in. Alright, so just back on the heat there for a minute, just to heat it all nicely through. The pasta's nice and hot still. Nice and warm anyway. I still got flameage. Yes. I might even just stick the lid on. We still need to get that egg in there. So 
And I need a bit of room to do that, so I'll either have a few gobfuls or I'll put a little bit in the in the frying pan just to get it out of the way and make some room and then decant it back in there again. Yeah, I think I've just lost enough of the flamage that it's just not quite hot enough, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to refuel. But I think I could definitely get this done in time if you know if I'm just a bit not having to worry about sort of filming. That's better, got a good flameage going there. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is you can't see it, but I'm just gonna chuck a bit of that down in the non-stick fry pan just to make room in there. And then Bosch in with an egg. He's like a real good mash up in there. And what the egg does for me, I mean, I've always, I, I've just got the recipe, or well not that it's a particularly complex re recipe or anything like that, but I just watch lots of videos, see how I think it's best made and then just kind of experiment and do it myself and, and change certain things. Um, for me, that what the egg does is in a kind of, it sounds a bit wrong, but it makes it slimy, it's, which sounds horrible, but it's not, I promise. Because basically just with the cream and the sauce, you know, just with the sauce, it's, it's kind of got a bit of a dry, kind of dry texture unless you, unless you make it really, really wet. Um, which isn't really what it's how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be sodden. It's supposed to, you know, it's not supposed to be like in a soup of, of white sauce. Really, it's supposed to be, or at least the way I like it, it's supposed to be in, you know, an, in a nice coating of sauce, which is what we've got now. And, and that's what the egg does. It just gives it a nice slimy is the wrong word, but gives it a much nicer texture. Makes it much nicer to eat. I'm just gonna, just gonna let that heat through properly just for a little minute. And then I will do the thumbnail. Well, after all that effort, it's time, isn't it? Let's um, let's do the taste test. This is how it looks. You focus in on that. Um, you'll see it really clearly in the thumbnail, but I mean, obviously I'm gonna like it. This is the way I like cooking it at home. I was just really seeing if it transferred into the wilderness quite nice, really. But yeah, let's give it a go. That egg's definitely an important ingredient, guys. It really changes the texture, for sure. I would probably put more pepper in next time. But I do like it peppery. Mm. I don't know if I would be able, to, I've, I've got most of it in here, really, just for display purposes. And then there's probably a third, maybe half left in the pot itself I think I'd probably eat it all in the, in, a, in the evening after a bike ride especially so I don't think in the Trangia Mini that I can cook kind of an, an evening meal that will go through into a breakfast which I definitely could on the on the slightly bigger Trangia which is something to keep in mind Yeah, I mean, it's as you'd expect. You can't go wrong, can you? If you like spaghetti carbonara. It's very difficult to mess this up. If you know how to cook, and you cook it to your own preference, it's just great. It's also great bike packing, bike packing food, cycling food, because and camping food and hiking food. You know, you can get something close to this in a in one paper bag, can't you? But it's not the same as far as I'm concerned. 
especially given you can adjust it. I know you can add salt and pepper to to the pre-bagged stuff, but with this you can really make it to your own taste. And of course, the other obvious thing to mention is that pasta's superb cold, so if you do, if you can't make enough of it that it will do a second meal, even if you don't like it for breakfast, you can stick it in a Tupperware box and that's your lunch the next day, which is great. Perfect! What a success! That's definitely one of my on-the-trail meals, there's no doubt about that. And as you can see, guys, that is me done. A lovely little view here, actually. I didn't mention, I'm in a, in a, we live on a campo, on a farm, and this is on the land where we rent, so, so it's, it's great to have a little place like this that I can come during, during the coronavirus and stuff. But yeah, so this is the kind of first of a few of my bike packing practice meals. Next is going to be a beef and Guinness stew, I think, um, with mashed potato on top. But yeah, I hope you like this video. I certainly enjoyed making it and I certainly enjoyed the food. Um, yeah, so tune in next time for a beef and Guinness pie, uh, beef and Guinness stew with a, with a topping of mashed potato. And then, you know, as soon as we possibly can, I'll be getting out on my mountain bike once this coronavirus mess is all finished with and I can start doing some cool bike packing videos. Um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching this video. On your bikes.